Mindsets. Hello, Sashikal. Welcome back. Uh, this is your host, Meena Jay. It's time to cut the nonsense and let's talk mindsets. मन की बातें तो होती रहेंगी कीप वॉचिंग माइंड सेंस मैं हूँ आपकी होस्ट सविता चैंड एंड टुडे इन द स्टूडियोज वी हैव लवली ट्रिशा रेम्बर सैद वेरी वोम वेलकम ट्रिशा ऑन आवर शो ऑन माइंड सेंस थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग मी थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर कमिंग ट्रिशा सो द फर्स्ट थिंग इज यू नो वट आई जस्ट कीप वॉचिंग यू बट आई वुड लाइक यू टू इंट्रोड्यूस योर सेल्फ टेल अस अलिटल बिट अबाउट योर सेल्फ सो आई एम ट्रिशा रेम प्रसाद आई I actually recently started a, a branding business and it's actually quite unique. Um my journey has been very interesting in that I've had businesses as well as um a very very much a spiritual journey. So this new branding business I have mm -hmm. um it's actually bringing all of it together to really um understand what your true identity is. Well, in one sentence you captured this so beautiful <laughs> trisha now going back to a little bit about your childhood mm. tell us a little bit about where you were born and um when if if you came to canada were you born and raised here so tell us about your childhood well mm. i i am indian in descent um mm -hmm. my great grandparents came from india mm -hmm. um to south africa actually wow. mm -hmm. um and i am the third generation in south africa when i was 12 we moved to canada to vancouver okay. um simply because it was the warmest weather across all of canada <laughs> yeah um i have amazingly beautiful memories of south africa and most of our extended family is in south africa um and i've lived in canada for oh gosh 20 something years now so give away your age <laughs> <laughs> so share one of the memories from south africa that is so fond that, mm -hmm. um well a lot of the really fond and beautiful memories are associated with my grandmother actually mm -hmm. um because my mom was a single mom for the first few years of my life mm -hmm. and um so I spent a lot of time with my grandmother and mm -hmm. for me it was a magical experience um i realized now it was probably menopause at the time but she would change clothes like 3 4 times in the day <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. to me it was like the most extravagant thing cuz she would put on a sari and then she changed into a dress and then to a house coat and then another sari for the day for me it was just a big dress up oh, wow. situation <laughs> <laughs> like a girl's dream come true with a dress up party. <laughs> It was a great a whole yeah. lot of fun for me. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the move to uh Canada, Vancouver. How was that? I mean, you were 12. So, um, you know, at that time we're going to school, making friends. We have mm -hmm. made friends. So the transition, how was that for you? Um, the transition actually um it was it wasn't difficult because When I first when we left South Africa I didn't want to leave mm -hmm. um because I was so attached to my grandmother mm -hmm. she was yeah. my whole world right mm -hmm. and in fact I resented my parents for a good 10 years <laughs> <laughs> But you're over that now I'm over it <laughs> I love my whole world now parents <laughs> um, but um you know coming to canada i thought it was just going to be a great big adventure and i kept telling myself you know it's just an extended vacation mm -hmm. so i made a lot of friends very easily and you know i came into grade 7 so we all went to high school together mm -hmm. so for yeah. me the transition was pretty okay you mm -hmm. know yeah. yeah so now trisha mm -hmm. let's come to now yes so i know <laughs> you said that you were um recently doing a branding mm -hmm. business branding so let's talk about that like um from you went to school uh, grade 7 and went to high school and then now you went to that walk yes. us through that a little bit okay mm -hmm. um so actually in high school i was very much i just very much kept to myself had a lot of friends and um it's actually quite funny because i have re really happy memories of high school and recently like a few months ago i was chatting online with some friends from high school and I was like wasn't high school so great? <laughs> and they're like where what world are you in? <laughs> exactly. I'm like we were all friends and we all just got along and they were like what are you talking about? Are you what sure you hung out with us? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so I it got me thinking about you know it's all about our personal experience yes. and the perspective we come at it with. Mm -hmm. You know? And so you know I took that same mindset and it's I've got this I've got a very happy go lucky sort of spirit and it's not to say that I haven't had uh, challenges in my life mm -hmm. every human being has mm -hmm. challenges and mm -hmm. we all experience it to a different degree 
but it doesn't make one person's challenge more or mm -hmm. less than mm -hmm. another person. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all relative. Mm -hmm. um, but I've had this mindset, I guess, since a, chi since a child that, you know, you just get on with life. You do what you have to do and you get on with life and you don't project that onto other people, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, my, my journey has been one of healing, of, of business. Uh, in my early 20s, uh, I went to design school. I went into healthcare and then I was like, oh, this is not for me. <laughs> okay. I was a little bit of a diva. <laughs> Um, so um, a few years in, I actually ended up going into f a fashion design school. Mm -hmm. And I knew going into design school that I actually wanted to make a name for myself and that I had something to say. Mm -hmm. And it had to be, because of my, you know, my experience with my grandmother, with all the clothing yes. and all of that, mm -hmm. it had to be with clothing. Mm -hmm. um, so I ran that business for almost 10 years. And I remember when starting it off, straight out of design school, people were like, what are you doing? You don't know business. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'm just going to do it. Because I've had this mindset, mm -hmm. if you want to do something, you just go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. And you'll figure it out, out as you go, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, I've, I've adapted. There's been a lot of very difficult lessons to learn in business mm -hmm. <laughs> and then personal development. Um, and about five, six years ago, I actually shut down that business because it was no longer congruent with who I was mm -hmm. and where I was going personally. And was that, um, so you were, were you were designing clothes? Yeah, so okay. um, I had a brand, a clothing brand that okay. sold in Vancouver across Canada. Mm -hmm. And actually at my peak, I was, I was showing in Germany and mm. um, I had opportunities to show in other places in Europe itself. Mm -hmm. And just when I was being offered probably the biggest contract, um, something inside of me was just, it's not right, something doesn't feel right. I was actually in Toronto at the time and they flew from Vancouver to Toronto to meet me and it was six people from all over. Mm -hmm. And um, they offered me what every designer would think was the thing they were working towards their entire career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when they presented it to me, all I kept thinking was, doesn't feel right. Wow. And I was like, but what have I been doing this whole time if it's not feeling right now? So I said, you know, I just need a moment. So I took a walk and I came back the next day and I said, you know what? This is not for me. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Wow. <laughs> Even that in itself, I mean, takes a lot of courage because, you know, especially when we're working towards something, we get into that, you know, I have to achieve so much. Even if you don't think it's right, you still want to reach that point or keep going and yes. make as much as you can and then kind of think about, okay, I'll, I'll deal with my not feeling right afterwards, right? Exactly. But, you know, so this is, this is the thing because not feeling right is actually feedback not just from your body but from your environment mm -hmm. that you're not being congruent to who you are and what your path actually is leading towards or you're meant to go towards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Patricia, I just want to say, listening to you, you know what, it, I've seen people live their entire lives and still don't know what they really want to yeah. do, what their, you know, what their passion is calling. And to hear you that, you know, you were at your peak it was like a dream come true when the moment when you had already known I'm not going to pursue this because this is not my right calling. So that is, you know, for to be able to know who you really are, that's a huge deal itself. Mm -hmm. And like Mina said, not to pursue your dream, that is like, you know, um, but like cutting a leg off. It's like, okay, <laughs> yeah. this is what I work for in the life, but now I'm not going to do this. So like, I'm, I'm still, like, I'm still shocked. <laughs> yeah, it's like very hard for me to digest that. But I know that you, you had that opportunity, but you turned it down because you went for your, whatever your next calling was. But I know you mentioned that you had opportunities, you know, um, um, in other countries, Europe, Germany, uh, and you started in Vancouver. Did you ever do anything with Hollywood? I did some work. Mm -hmm. um, I have had my work on the red carpet. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, at my peak, um, mm -hmm. I was being commissioned for work. Um, uh, by Deepa Mehta's movies, um, mm -hmm. the act, the actors that worked with them. Mm -hmm. um, I have, yeah, I've had plenty of actors and actresses actually work with me mm -hmm. um, personally to develop designs mm -hmm. and show it off on the red carpet. <laughs> so, it was wow. a great deal of fun. <laughs> yeah. So, Trisha, before going to mm -hmm. where we have, um, you know, 
gone over the designer mm -hmm. designing and going to the next I know that you also have a passion because I follow you I know yes. you have another passion that you have been doing it for probably ever since you were yes. very young or child yes. so let's talk about that okay mm -hmm. so and you know and I think it's that passion that actually I can accredit to having that moment of presence during mm -hmm. that contract mm -hmm. um, so I've been on a journey of personal development you know and um, I grew up in a family where meditation was very important. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily um, anything like uh, a religious meditation, but being present and connecting. Mm -hmm. And I, I will be honest, I, I credit my mom for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because she was, I think in her heyday, she too was, you know, like raising hell. And, uh, <laughs> yes. and, and being a rebel in her own way, you know, uh, the, the way she could. Uh, so. You know, personal development and uh, practice of meditation. Um, this is what I think has allowed me to be present in the most chaotic moments or the mm. moments where I can lose myself very easily if I don't have that awareness of, oh, what am I being presented with? Whether it is that contract or whether it is, you know, um, the chaos of life and people, mm -hmm. you know, You're just being able to just be in that moment okay, what is actually the priority right now? And being able to hear and listen. Um, aside from going to fashion design school and getting my certification and diploma there and um, being a registered cardiology technologist, my driving thing was how do I uh, impact and affect and help people? And that's where the personal development came in. Mm -hmm. So since a very young age, I've been meditating and also curious about how to exercise my emotional resilience. Mm -hmm. And so all of that actually um, converges into what I do now. If somebody else told me there was a rebel side of you, I wouldn't believe them. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from you, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll accept a rebel it. for me. <laughs> I'll accept it. But Trisha, I also I know that mm -hmm. you are into classical dancing and all this, so yes. I want to, you know, if you can share of your course. experience about that, how you got into that, uh -huh. um, you know, into classical dancing and what have you, like, how that, um, how did you incorporate that into your journey? Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, so, um, like you mentioned, since the age of four, I've been uh, dancing in a uh, specifically in Kathak classical dance. Kathak classical. And mm -hmm. I have my master's level in Kathak. Mm -hmm. And I originally got into it uh, mostly because it was my mom's dream. And, you know, from the, from the generation of the time, at, at that time, um, it, w it, was, it was deemed that uh, during her generation that the dance was not right for women. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the uh, women were very judged for um, putting themselves on the stage of any mm -hmm. sort, for performing of any, any mm -hmm. So. For my mom, she wanted me to have that freedom and that joy that she yearned for. Mm -hmm. So I got into dance because of that. Mm -hmm. um, that's not to say that I don't love Kathak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've seen me perform yes. it, I believe. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, for me, it's sheer joy. I think dance is, <laughs> I think it's a regal way of soul's expression. You wow. know, mm -hmm. I've, I've experienced, I've had out of body experiences just performing on stage, you know, mm -hmm. and again, for me, dance is a form of meditation. It's not mm -hmm. just a performance on stage. Mm -hmm. When you've dedicated decades of your life mm -hmm. to an art form, it, you don't do it to perform. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you wow. do it because of yourself, and it's a part of who you are. It's your identity. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so you speak on a very deep level, you know, mm -hmm. and I, um, it's like when you speak, I literally feel goosebumps. <laughs> You know, for somebody so young to have so many, um, so many things, and you have, it's not just you just had a fling with the thing, you know, you, you <laughs> did your diploma in designing and you did your master's level in Kathak dancing, like you mastered everything before you moved on to the next thing. So, uh, like, how many callings have you had? <laughs> <laughs> So like, you know, I need to jump on your pen, right? I know. <laughs> We're going to jump on. <laughs> you could take it. <laughs> you know, I think like um, the new generation, my, my, myself and younger, mm -hmm. um, I feel like we're kids in a candy store mm -hmm. because the previous generations have done so much work 
um, you know, they're post-World War, they've um, traveled across continents to reestablish families mm -hmm. and, re and build new roots. Mm -hmm. So like our generation and younger, we have this ability to take full advantage of all the sacrifices mm -hmm. those who came before us, you know, actually made so that we could have better lives and could so dream true. big mm -hmm. and do anything we want. They made those sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So I believe that, you know, to be able to, you know, work with something here and really get curious about it, you mm -hmm. know, and give your heart and soul to something. That's honoring those who came before you because they never had that opportunity. They did it so you could do it, wow. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to touch one more thing. I know that you mentioned um, your mom quite a few times and uh, you know obviously I feel like you know either your mom lived uh, vicariously through your experiences because some of the things that you didn't but also she must be you know like I can under I can just picture the kind of woman your mom would be to, you know to yeah. promote you to support yeah. you and and for you as a daughter to live out all those dreams that your mom had envisioned for you so kudos to that um, <laughs> and now let's come to, uh, I know, let's talk about the uh, business branding. Right, so, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, you know a little bit about my journey right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and do enlighten us where you feel like we are because, if, you know, you are like, it's like I, op I touch one thing, you come up with a whole new, you know, that's something you have done, so please do not leave details behind. I want to know everything. I'm sure our audience are very interested. <laughs> Every single detail of your life. <laughs> I don't think we have all the time. I probably don't want to put all of that on camera. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, when I shut down the business, and it was that, that was actually a turning point for me, you know. So how many years ago was that that you um, actually shut like down five, that business? five, six okay. years ago. Um, it was back in 2016 that it was formally, like, I was like, okay, time to end this and not drag it out until it actually dies, dies, you yes. know. <laughs> because I, I literally, I've, like, I literally remember you doing a ramp walk. Yes. I remember that. <laughs> and, like, where did the time go that now you yeah, said I closed wow. the business? You know, yeah. I never did a formal announcement uh, yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. I, I just stopped producing new collections, mm -hmm. um, mostly because I personally wasn't ready to face what the questions could be, mm. because I didn't know how to answer them. Mm. You know, um, when you when you have that turning point and you realize that you've been on this path that started off at a place mm -hmm. that was congruent with who you are. Mm -hmm. But the industry, the environment, and the yearning to achieve something kind of veered you off mm -hmm. path. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of have to understand, well, where, did, where, did that, where was that fork in the road where you made those decisions to take you off path? Mm -hmm. So I, I needed to go inward mm -hmm. and truly understand my, my own identity. Mm -hmm. So I didn't make a formal announcement because mm -hmm. I didn't know how to tell people, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. What are you doing now? I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I honestly took a good couple years of personal development, um, honestly just meditation every single day, every single morning. I would wake up between 3.30 and 4.30 and meditate wow. for up to two hours every morning just to reconnect with myself. And that in itself is commitment to wake up at 3.30 <laughs> every day. Yeah. That is like another adventure that you have gone into yeah. master did, you know, having to, to wake up at 3.30 and to meditate for two hours. I know. I mean, we, we all talk about, you know, meditation and being in touch uh, with ourselves to so mm -hmm. wake up whatever time or during the day and we do like five minutes and we think, oh, wow, we've accomplished <laughs> so much. And now you're just telling me 3.30 <laughs> and two hours. Well, I mean, you know, it's, um, I needed that time because I was so confused about myself and it's not to say that five minutes won't get you what you need, you know? Mm -hmm. It's about the quality of what you do, mm -hmm. yeah. right? I needed that. You were so disciplined. <laughs> I know. Like, you were so disciplined. <laughs> that comes from um, good parenting, and uh, I will say that. <laughs> Shout out to mom. <laughs> but, um, you know, that time really helped me understand what my identity was. And I understood that it was me losing myself in my business, and not the business being a true reflection or expression of my own identity, that was the fork in the road. Mm. That's where I was like, oh, pursuing success and pursuing big things without being true to who I was. You know what, that makes so much sense mm -hmm. when you said, uh, you know, when you, you're, it's something you 
uh, um, want to do or it's in you to do, but then the path that you take or, you know, the industry, because you see that, um, you know, in a lot of things, the industry, the people doesn't jive with that, even mm -hmm. though it's something that you want to do or your purpose, and it kind of veers you off. Mm -hmm. So I totally relate to that. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you can have, I had a client and he, he, he told me this for his opening statement to me. <laughs> the first time I met him was I made $24 million in one year. Wow. You know, and then I said to myself, and then I said out to him, so why are you here with me? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, because he lacked fulfillment. Mm -hmm. He had a fully successful business, mm -hmm. but he well, himself did not feel whole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's when the ideas came to me. Wait a minute, you can have everything, but mm -hmm. if you don't feel like a million dollars, if you don't feel like you're worth that twenty-four million that you made in that year, mm -hmm. what's the point? What's the point? So true, mm -hmm. right? So that's where the branding and of a true expression of who you are. Um, being congruent because branding, it's not just business. It's people in business doing business with other people in business. At the bottom of that is people doing business with people. Mm -hmm. And we need to connect and be congruent with that. Jenna, I think, you know, um, you mentioned your client not earning $24 million, but I think you're so right. We have to feel worthy of what we have or what we want to achieve and be in that moment to, you cannot feel it unless you are present in that moment. If you're just looking like outside of the business or looking at a bank account, yeah, yeah. you don't find fulfillment in there. You will find, find fulfillment in here. So that is another very profound, you know, just the word itself, you being worthy, feeling worthy. So I feel like we have a lot to learn <laughs> from you. No, no, so please. <laughs> So this, you know, you talked about the branding business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What exactly is, is that? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, right. if we, if people don't know branding or, you know, what that means, maybe yes. just explain what that actually is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like a lot of people believe um, branding is a really cool logo and a really mm -hmm. hot website that just, yeah. really, you know, attracts Mission all these people. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, it is that, but at the end of the journey, it's not where you start. You mm -hmm. know, I approach branding from a very interesting perspective and mm -hmm. that's you know that's where the personal development and mm -hmm. my own inner enlightening has come mm -hmm. uh, come from it's I think of branding as the soul of your business mm -hmm. you know like if I was a human being what's the difference with, between me being dead and alive it's your soul mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. so if you can breathe life into a business mm -hmm. that's when people want to do business with you mm -hmm. because they feel you Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so that soul comes from your personal values. It comes from how you actually approach the relationships with those you do business with. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've got this program and right now it's running as an eight week program. And we start off with one full weekend of just personal development. We're like digging deep into who you are, um, you know, your life experiences, what that wisdom is and what you've been trying to say your whole life. You know, you start a business with an idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You started with an idea, but what actually prompted that idea? Mm -hmm. Because it came from you. Inside. So it's some, something mm -hmm. inside of you mm -hmm. was saying, I have this to say with my business. Mm -hmm. So we work on that message so that people can connect with you. It's a very much a, branding is very much a bridge, you know, between you as a business and a person and building mm -hmm. that relationship with those you want to do business with. Uh, eight week program and this is something that you recently started uh, uh, during COVID. Yes. <laughs> you developed this program during COVID. Well, what else are you going to do during COVID? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I, what I noticed was during COVID, a lot of people lost their, their jobs mm -hmm. and a lot of people were forced to look at themselves and where mm -hmm. they're going and a lot of new businesses were popping up mm -hmm. especially amongst uh, what I call personal brands so uh, energy healers um, massage therapists people who are like oh forget this day job thing because clearly I can't depend on it mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. I just want to make a name for myself and I have something to say but what I saw popping up was inconsistencies with who they are and how they're showing up online mm -hmm. and what their message is you know vocabulary is so important mm -hmm. especially right now because that's all we have mm -hmm. in the messaging right mm -hmm. 
So I was actually inspired by friends who are who consider themselves light workers, mm -hmm. you know, who have such great value to impart, so much value to impart on humanity. And it can really be a flourishing business, but they just don't know how to articulate what mm -hmm. they do and why they do it. So that's why the program was born. <laughs> so how is the program going? Like I know it's very recent, but yes. how is how how, how would you describe it as going? Okay, so we're, we're halfway mm -hmm. through the program. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, right now. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll be honest, I was uh, a little, I was a little nervous. <clears throat> Excuse me, at the beginning, um, because I was like, I don't know if people are going to like work with this personal development. It's like 50% business strategy and branding, and 50%, you know, uh, personal development. I'm like, are people even ready for this? But one thing I've seen is that this. This COVID situation has actually brought out the inner light in people. Mm -hmm. They want that fulfillment. Mm -hmm. They yearn for it. Mm -hmm. So this program, actually, people are, <laughs> I'm getting emails every day. I'm just going to share this every mm -hmm. day from my attendees saying, oh my God, it just sparked this idea. This exercise you gave me, just, it, it just, I just realized mm -hmm. why I've been doing this my whole life and mm -hmm. how I can actually take this and make, make a, a beautiful program myself mm -hmm. out of your program, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So they've taken all these tools and it's really enabling them and empowering them. Um, so, Trisha, I want to ask you, so I know that uh, it's an eight-week program, mm -hmm. so do you start the program at certain times, or do you have, like, um, uh, like do you run one course of the program for eight weeks, then you start, like, people sign up to do the next set of eight weeks program, like, how does it work? Okay, mm -hmm. so, um, we... And, uh, sorry, and yes. I just wanted to also add to what you're talking about, <laughs> I don't want to interrupt. That's fine. Who are your attendees? Yeah, ah, if you can add to that. For sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how the program works is, um, we start with a full weekend intensive, which we launched in at the end of March, mm -hmm. um, and then we go into a weekly sessions, and it's usually on the evening. Right now, it's running on Tuesday evenings, mm -hmm. but you can't go into the eight weeks of weekly sessions without doing the personal development intensive first. Okay, first. Mm -hmm. um, so that the intensive is actually a bonus because it's the the actual program is eight weeks long. And so there is a pre-requirement, like almost like a prerequisite to go mm -hmm. into the eight week program. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that's what makes this program stand out from everything else mm -hmm. that's out there. Mm -hmm. you know? Mind sense.